Okay, this question is a partial fractions question. It says, write this thing in partial fractions, and then you would go on. I think the next part of the question would be to um, integrate it, maybe. So we'll do that partial fractions bit first. So the first thing you've got to do, before you can do this in partial fractions, the order of the bottom line, so that means the highest power of this bottom line is 3, and the highest power of the top line is also 3. So if you've got the order of the bottom line is greater or equal to than the order of the top line, then you must first divide. So we've got to do that. I, I like to do it by polynomial division. There's another way of doing it, but I prefer polynomial division. So we're doing x cubed minus x squared is our divider. And we're dividing x cubed and plus 1. So I've left space here where the quadratic term would be and also where the linear term is, is going to be. And that's very, very important to do. So you're thinking about the x cubed. You're forgetting about this bit. You're just thinking about the x cubed. And x cubed goes into x cubed one time. So you line it up with the 1 here. And then underneath, you do 1 times the divider. So 1 times x cubed and then minus x squared. And that's what you get. And then you subtract. Don't put a wee subtraction sign in here. You know you're subtracting, but don't put it in. It just confuses things. So you have 0 minus minus x squared, which is 0 plus x squared, which is just x squared. x cubed minus x cubed just disappears. And then... Um, that is as far as you can go because this thing, x cubed, would not go into x squared. So that is as good as you can go. And you can just bring this down then as well. So that uh, comes down as well. So you get a plus 1. So when you divide, what you've just shown is that x cubed plus 1 being divided by x cubed minus x squared. It is the same as it goes in one whole time because that's what's up here. And then the remainder is this. So that is x squared plus 1 all over x cubed minus x squared. And that is it. Okay. I am going to imagine the next part of the part, next part of this question, part C, says, uh, we're going to say, it says write x cubed plus 1 over x cubed minus x squared in partial fractions. Okay, so we're going to pretend that's what it says. I don't know if it did or not. Uh, so if it did, you would what you would do is you would just say first thing. You'd say x cubed plus 1 <coughs> over x cubed minus x squared is equal to, and what you've done from part 1, that was 1 plus x squared plus 1. And I would just factorize this bottom line and make life a wee bit easier. x squared can come out, leaving you x minus 1. So this thing, I'll call this equation 1. Uh, Oh, sorry, this, we're still on. This is part A. We're still doing this. Sorry, I haven't, uh, it would still be this. Didn't need to write on any of that down. Forget about that. What a little rubbish. Um, we'll do that. And then what we will do here is we will uh, do this as partial fractions. So we'll go back to the equation one. We're going to look, just investigate this part of it. So x squared times x minus one. So that's going to be a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x minus 1. Oh, should have an identity sign. And then multiply across, you have x squared plus 1 is equal to, that's just going to be a x, x minus 1, <coughs> plus b times x minus 1, and plus c, x squared. And then I would use equating and substitution. So first of all, I'd say let x equal 0. That means you're going to get 1 is equal to... Uh, 1 is equal to, and it's just going to, that's going to go to 0. The a term is going to 0. The b term is going to go to b times minus 1. So that's it. And the c term is going to go to 0. So b is equal to minus 1. Put that away box. We'll come back to that again. I'm also going to say let, um, so I'll just do that down here so we can actually see this. Uh, we'll say let x equal 1. And that means the left hand side is going to be 1 plus 1, so it's 2. The right hand side. A term is going to be 0, the B term is going to be 0, the C term is going to be 1, so C times 1. So we better work out. Your C is equal to 2. And then for the last one, I'm going to equate the x squared term. So I'm going to say equate the, co uh, equate the coefficients of x, x squared, sorry. I've got 1x squared on the right-hand side. If I multiply this out, I'd have A times x squared. And I'd also have my C times my x squared. So 1 is equal to A plus C. And then you know your c is 2. A wee bit of working out. Your a works out to be minus 1. 
Okay, so uh, let me just write that down. So the whole thing, equation one becomes then, uh, we had our x cubed plus one, well, I'll zoom in on this in a second, over x cubed minus x squared. It was in one whole time. Then minus one over x, because the a was minus one, my b was also minus one, minus one over x squared. And then my c, it was, what was it? It was two, so two over x minus one. Okay, and then what I thought, I was talking rubbish earlier on, what I thought my part c would say, integrate, integrate x cubed plus one over x cubed minus x squared. So if I just do that very quickly, uh, my integral is gonna be of one, and then this thing is minus one over x, and then minus one over x squared, plus two over x minus one, integrated with respect to x. You can integrate one with respect to x. Nope, sorry, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change one of the terms here. This one here, I'm gonna write it as x to the minus two, and that's two over x minus one. You can integrate the, this thing dead easily, that's just going to be x. Integrate 1 over x, you just got to get ln of x, strictly we need a modulus. Integrate this, raise the power by 1, we'll go to minus 1, divide by the new power. Minus divided by minus is plus, so it's going to be plus x to the minus 1. And this thing, if you just integrated 1 over x minus 1, that would give you ln of modulus of x minus 1. So if you integrate 2 over that, it's going to give you 2 ln of x minus 1 and then plus your constant. And the last thing I would do, is make it a wee bit prettier, I just write ln of modulus of x. I'd write that as one over x, because I think that's how they give a question, that sort of form. And plus two, ln of x minus one, and plus your c. Done.